Before we start this video, a large thank you to Robert, Peter, a name I unfortunately can't pronounce. Thank you for the support, my friend. Jeff, Richie, Finwalk, Devin, Duke, Tenatian, Hibikel underscore six, Stas, Kelsan, welcome back, Kelsan, Max, Marcus, Franco, Efren, and a name I also cannot pronounce, and Rendell X. Welcome back, my friend. Thank you for the support, guys. I hope you enjoy the video. Hello, everybody, and today we're going to begin work on our advanced AI system. So if I go to the AI folder here now and check out my states, you'll see we have this example state or this base class state, and then every other state derives from that. Now, we're going to follow the same functionality, but we're going to make AI advanced states their own thing because these are general states that can be used for almost any AI, like, you know, animals, dogs, uh, humanoid, undead. So we'll call this general AI because these use uh, attack actions and don't actually use the weapon themselves. Uh, the weapon themselves is just there to open a damage clutter. So we're going to make another folder. I'm just going to call it advanced humanoid AI because these will be the AI that act more like a player. They'll be able to roll, dodge. You can select their combat style. Um, you can change their weapons and they'll use the weapon movesets, etc., etc. So I'm just going to basically go and make another folder here too for boss AI. I'm just going to put that boss combat states uh, script in there. Now you can make as many different forms of these scripts as you want and follow similar principles but change them slightly. Um, or you can make one set of modular scripts and you know change things from there. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do two different sets. So I'm going to start off by making a script called idle state humanoid. And humanoid will be for our advanced AI. I'm just going to call it humanoids. So the, the name is not so long. I'm going to start by dropping in my namespace. I'm going to delete the start and update functionality and make this derive from the base class state. Now, we're actually going to add a bit of logic to the uh, original idle state script too. So let's start by opening that up. We're going to basically copy it uh, because as of right now during this video, there's not going to be any, any differences between the idle states. And that could change in the future when we add on more logic. But I'm going to copy and paste uh, everything in here. And I'm going to take a sip of tea. I'm also going to get rid of those regions. Uh, this was written a long time ago, and I've since grown to dislike regions. You can keep them if you want. This is just personal preference. It's not really anything important. I'm just going to delete them. So I'm going to begin by going down through the code here. And we're going to start commenting it out just to keep this neat. That's something we started doing recently too. Uh, well, not recently. A few episodes ago, definitely now, a while ago. I'm going to start by saying up here, searches for a potential target within the detection radius. So what this does is it checks all the colliders around us. If it's on the layer um, of detection, it will then look for a character stats manager and then process the next step. Then I'm going to say if a potential target is found that is not on the same team as the AI, then we proceed to the next step. So if we do find a character stats manager uh, that is on the detection layer of character and we're not on the same team or the team ID on the character stats manager is not the same, we proceed to the next step. And lastly, we have here, if a potential target is found, it has to be standing in front of the AI. We check our viewable angle. And if it is, then we add them as a target. But we want to add one more step into this. We want to make sure there's nothing in front of the AI between the AI and its potential target. Otherwise, uh, the AI will be able to get you as a target through a wall, and we don't want that. We're going to do the same thing with our lock on. We're going to use if physics.alignCast. And what this does is it checks uh, a position between two points. And if it hits something, it returns true. So we're going to say enemy, as in our enemy manager, uh, dot lock on transform, because this is usually positioned on the chest. So this is where the ray cast will start, up on the body, not down on the floor at the feet. Um, so we're going to start that from the enemy dot lock on transform, and we're going to make it go to our character's potential target dot lock on transform. Now, to do this, we want to actually first, I'm going to rename enemy to AI character, just so it's more general. Uh, and we're, we're going to want to not get a character stats manager, but instead get a character manager. Why are we doing this? Well, recently we changed all of our scripts to basically get called from the, the manager. And also we're storing our lock on transform there. And it's just better to look for the character manager and not the character stats manager. Because like I said, a long time ago, we did a refactor where we call everything from our characters manager. It's like the main hub of all functionality. So I'm going to rename that to target character, and then I'm going to say target character dot character stats manager dot team ID. And that looks good. And now down here, we can simply do target character dot lock on transform. And now we're going to have another small problem. Uh, on the enemy manager, we actually store the lock on target or the current target rather as a character stats manager script. So we're actually going to go change that to a character manager script. 
and that will basically just kind of fit the conventions of all of our new scripts. But before we do that, as you can see here, we have a few colliders on the enemy. Uh, so we have the repost and backstab collider and the character collider. So we have repost, backstab, and also there is the character layer itself, which is what our enemy is made of. Uh, now, when we use the um, the line cast, let's make a layer for this. So we're only firing this on whatever layers we want. So um, I could be getting this backwards, but this is layers to ignore for line of sight. So I think whatever layers we add to this, it ignores. I'm going to double check, though, because I, I actually think I might have that backwards. So let's go down here, and I'm just going to actually save that right now first. And let's open up some brackets. And if it does return anything, we don't want to do anything. We're just going to say return. Uh, this because we don't want to get a target if there's something in the way else if there's nothing in the way then we want to add that character as our target because we've cleared every single check and this is a lot better now because now we can't get a target through the walls you can see this is still going to give you an error this is just because as i said before the current target is actually a stats manager and we need to change that to a character manager variable which we will do momentarily so let's actually go over now to the enemy manager and do that uh, and right wherever you have it, where is it? Um, let's see. Oh, okay. Now I see it. Yeah. So the current target variable, character stats manager. No, just change it to character manager. This will give you an error on the other idle state script, which we will fix as well. So if I minimize that now, you're going to see, you're going to get a couple errors here. Let's double click these. This is simple. All we do here, this is the regular idle state script. Now that we've actually changed the new one, we can just copy and paste the logic from the new script and paste it in the old script because they're going to function exactly the same. This is simply going to tell the AI how it goes about getting a target. That's not going to change from advanced to basic. The target functioning uh, or the target search system is the same. If you want to change it, feel free. I'm going to keep it the same. Uh, and we can close it out and let's go down here. All right. So uh, above this, I'm just going to add a comment here. So again, this is very clear. If we come back to it months, weeks later, however long, uh, if our potential target has uh, an obstacle, between itself and the AI, we're just going to say return and do nothing. And otherwise, obviously, we're going to assign that target to our AI. All right, so I'm just going to talk a bit now while I type. Um, what we want to do now is basically make sure that our lock on transform is at the level of the chest. And I'm just going to double check and make sure that the layers to ignore um, is not backwards. And by that, I mean this layer might actually be the only layer this line gets cast on, which I think it is, because sometimes the documentation is written a little confusing. It's not very clear. All right, so that looks good. Let's save that. And I'm going to go into the game here now, go to our enemy. And now make sure your lock on transform, uh, or let's go to the states first, rather, sorry. Um, and let's just set this up. So, oh, I have an error, so it's not letting me. Let's double click that. Let's see. Okay, yes, this is the ambush state, uh, very similar. Just change character stats manager to character manager. It's just, again, this is detecting a target. We, we made this a long time ago when the, the enemy is sleeping or it's ready to ambush. There we go. I'm just going to change that name to, to also potential target, just so that's very clear. And we're going to save. All right, now let's go back and try that again. So I'm going to begin by assigning the layers to ignore. We want to ignore the backstab layer and the repost layer and the character collision layer and maybe even the character layer because... Uh, we don't want to get the raycast stopping while when it comes out of the lock on transform. And I'm going to go back in here and I did test that and I actually got that wrong. So let's call that layers to or layers that block line of sight. That's a better name because any layer that you assign, uh, it will block the line of sight. So now instead of assigning those character layers, assign nothing and then assign the default layer um, because the default layer, at least for me, is what my environment's on. So I, I've made a wall here. As you can see, I've called it short wall, and uh, you can see that the layer is in fact set to default. So uh, furthermore, right here default, if we actually go to our enemy and go down to the lock on transform, it's at the ground. We don't want that. So put it up to the chest that way, or even the eyes if you want for eye level, or you can make it its own transform for that. But I'm going to use the lock on transform because it's very close anyway. And then we can go to the side here, and what we can see is that um, if we shoot this straight right now from the enemy, this is our wall, turn it this so you can see it. You can see it'll actually bring up in the wall and you won't be able to get seen. Now, if you want to make your own transform for this at eye level, that's totally cool too. Uh, and if we go to our player, just to show you also, make sure it's the same on the player. Don't have it in the ground, otherwise the raycast will fire at the feet and that will uh, that will make your, your line of sight behavior very weird. 
So if I go over here now and run towards this gentleman, you can see this wall is blocking us and now he cannot see me. But the second I come out from behind this wall and the line cast connects, there he goes. He tries to attack me. So that is excellent and is working as intended. So this is just kind of like adding some more functionality to what we already had. We're going to layer it on, but now we're going to keep moving on and set up the functionality for the more advanced AI. So next, let's do the pursue target state. Uh, I'm going to call it pursue target state humanoid to keep within the naming conventions. And again, this is going to be uh, the same for now. Um, you can tweak it a bit, but I'm just going to keep it pretty much exactly the same. Uh, again, I'm giving these a different name set because in the future, if we do want to tweak it, we're, we're able to. So, And uh, we want to keep all the advanced states uh, in their own folder and separate. We don't want to be using basic states with advanced states. So we want to make sure everything has its, its own set of scripts. So I'm going to copy everything inside the pursue target state, the regular one. And I'm going to paste it inside the pursue target humanoid script. Whoops, I think I just pasted it inside the tick function. Yes, I did. I did not mean to do that. So let's undo and I'll just paste that right here. Now, uh, we just made the idle state humanoid. Right now, change this pursue target state variable to pursue target humanoid and everything will work exactly the same. You can change the name too if you want. But basically for every humanoid state script we make for our advanced AI, just add the word humanoid at the end of these variables after we've made them. So we don't have the combat stance state yet, so we don't have to we don't have to mess with that just yet. So let's make sure this code is all fine. And yes, this actually is perfect. Nothing needs to be changed here. I don't know why we're calling this rotate towards target state. So just delete that. That's not being used anymore. I think that was from some old code we just didn't delete. And likewise, over here on the regular pursuit target state, delete the rotate towards target state. We don't call that from the script. We don't need it. All right, next, let's make the actual beginning of our advanced AI, the uh, combat stance state humanoid and this is where all of the combat style functionality is going to take place this script is going to probably warrant not a whole video in its own but at least half of one so we're gonna basically spend the rest of the video uh, mostly on the script and then we're gonna really hammer it home in the next one with the attack state as well so make it derived from state begin by copying and pasting or first we can change the combat stance to combat stance humanoid variable on the pursue target uh, humanoid script that way we're not referencing the old script, we're referencing the new one. Uh, and then we can copy all the logic from the old combat stance, script, uh, combat stance script and paste it in the new one, but we're not going to be keeping all of this. We're going to tweak it heavily, and I mean quite a bit. Um, some functionality is still useful here. For example, the rotate towards target, that's fine. Uh, the decide circling action we're gonna expand upon, walk around target is fine. And get new attack, we're going to change drastically because we're not going to use attack actions. We are going to use a similar system, but we're going to make that system use the weapon the character is holding. So let's go to enums because in order to decide how we're going to change all these variables around and what we're going to do, we need to make a new enum. Uh, and I'm going to call it, hmm, let's call it humanoid AI combat stance or combat style, combat type. Uh, let me just mess around here for a sec. What do I want to call that? No, I'm going to call that humanoid or human AI combat stance style. And I'm just going to shorten that to human AI combat style. Yeah, that, that, that feels like it's good. So um, for the video's sake, let's start off by doing two sword and shield, which will be just your generic knight or your soldier. And then we'll have archer. Uh, and this one's going to be vastly different. So I'm going to take a sip of tea. Okay, so we want to say that now. And you can add as many as you want to this. You can add uh, sword, spell sword, you can, whatever you want to do, add it. I'm gonna show you how to make the framework for these. So right here on state tick, you can see where, um, let's go back to the enemy manager first and make that variable here. So under the AI combat settings, let's make a public human uh, AI combat style. And I'm just gonna call that variable combat style. And you can put this on the enemy manager scripts or you can put it on the uh, the combat stance script, whatever you prefer. So you could even put it just over here. It's all the same, really. Um, I am going to keep it under the enemy manager script because I have all of my combat settings here. But you could just take this right now and copy it or remove it from here and put it here. It does fit here. I don't think it's out of place here. I just personally like having all of the AI settings very readily accessible on the main brain, so the manager. So I'm gonna keep it right there. Now, we have all this logic running in our tick, 
And our tick is what happens when we're in the state. It runs all the logic every frame. So let's actually make two new private voids, one for each new combat style. And let's call this process followed by the name of the combat style. So sword and shield combat style. And then we can have process archer combat style. And now, instead of just running one flat type of logic, we're going to run a function depending on the combat style on the AI. So you can paste for now this in here in sword and shield. And then what we're gonna to wanna to do is paste needing an enemy manager in here. So we're gonna need an enemy manager to call this. And instead of a void, we're going to want to make this a type state because it returns a state just like before. So this is the exact same functionality, but instead we're choosing to run one or the other. And let's just put return this in here. So now, put simply, what we can do is up here, we can say if our enemy is at the combat style of sword and shield, we run our process sword and shield combat style logic. Else if our enemy is at the combat style of an archer, we run our process archer combat style logic. And else we can just return and do nothing. And I'm gonna take a sip of tea. Okay, so I hope that's straightforward. Um, and you can kind of basically make a chain here and choose between as many combat styles as you want. And in the next video, we're really gonna handle basically setting up each of the styles in these two functions. Right now, I just have the regular code from before copied and pasted into the process sword and shield combat style, but that's gonna change dramatically. Um, so basically, this gives you the freedom to still use the framework of all the AI's functionality up to this point. And then you can really make it your own here and differ it. And if you wanted to, you could even make different combat stance uh, scripts and just have all the other state scripts the same, but just change this one throughout your different kinds of AI. But I like doing it this way. Like I said, don't be afraid to experiment and do it your own way. I encourage you to. There's a million ways to do this. This is just the way I landed on. It's very similar to the way I handled Nephilim. And uh, as, the, as the time goes on, we're going to add more logic onto this, a lot more to this, uh, rolling, dodging, blocking, all that good stuff. And then we're gonna tweak our attack state logic just a little bit too. We're gonna to make this uh, this form of AI feel very different than our basic AI. Uh, we're gonna make it so we can strafe around in circles while running or walking. We're gonna do a lot of different stuff here. We're gonna make it so the AI doesn't run into the player anymore. We'll do that for the regular AI too, it stops. And I'm gonna rename this to AI combat style so it's more general. So if you want to keep this on your regular AI too, just as a, as a label as to what it is, you can do that. So you can have like um, large on dead, small on dead, uh, dog, etc. So then you're able just to keep this on your regular AI just for a tag or a descriptor of sorts. So I hope this video was very informative and you liked it as much as I like making it. In the next video, we are going to start hammering home uh, these systems and really, really add a lot of logic to the combat stand state. So I suspect this will be at least a couple more videos uh, for it to be fully fleshed out. So if you guys made it this far, would appreciate a like and comment on the video. It does appease the YouTube algorithm gods. It does help out my series so, so much. And as always, a large thank you. Thank you so much to my patrons is because you guys I get to keep doing this. And man, I love doing this kind of stuff. So I will see you guys in the next video where we will start our combat stance script for real.